Hello, 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 trans surfer and the trans surfing curious. My name is Renee Garcia, guys, and this is Trans Surfing TV. And today on Trans Surfing TV, I'm going to start a little three part series. It's going to be one of these numbers where I kind of read a little from the book. I am going to tackle three parts of a concept, which is going to be the alternatives flow. Today, we will go over going with the flow. The next lesson will be guiding signs, and then after that, letting go. And these ideas that I'm going to express to you today and the lessons to come really are like game changers. They really are, especially for those of you that are using a lot of inner intention like I was in my pre transurfing reality. I actually had an experience come to mind. I remembered it when I encountered this knowledge for the first time that I had been actually working against this exact idea because of a little belief that embedded itself into my mind around the time of, I think, seventh grade. It was either seventh or eighth grade. And this experience that I had sort of convinced me that going with the flow was for losers. <laughs> I know, weird, right? Because it's kind of the opposite in the trans surfing modality. I had a poster that was next to my desk in junior high that showed a boat on some waves, a sailboat on some waves in the sea. And the little caption was something along the lines of, what are you going to do? Make waves or coast with the flow or something like that. And I remember thinking to myself that the making waves was you really like doing stuff, right? You really making things happen in your reality. And the going with the flow part was like you, as Vadim says in the book here, getting tossed around in your little boat by the waves. So I actually equated going with the flow in a negative way. And I remember thinking to myself at that time that I didn't wanna, you know, I didn't wanna go with the flow. I wanted to make waves. And I expressed this to the, to the girl sitting next to me in this class and she said, Oh no, Renee, you won't, you won't make waves. You're definitely the type of person that will just um, get taken by the sea or whatever. And I, it's so amazing, 25 years ago, right? I remember this. And this whole idea like came to my mind when I started to read Reality Transurfing. And I realized that that little seed that had been planted in that course, in that class, um, grew into this big way of operating where I was using a ton of inner intention constantly. So I had achieved some success in my life, but it all came pretty hard. And when I found this knowledge, I was like, holy shit, <laughs> there's a there's an easier way to do it. And since since I found this this concept and really started to implement it in my life, not only have I released myself from that inner intention modus operandi and switched over to this much easier way of operating, but more has come to me. So not only am I released from the thing that is like causing me distress, but I'm actually getting more working from a, in an entirely different place. So that's what I'm going to discuss today when I read a little bit about this chapter going with the flow. Before I get started, remember to like this video, comment below, and subscribe to this channel. And all of our courses, man, we're loaded up. Mo Money, Becoming Magnetic, Reality 2.0, Tufty 2.0. Check out the links below. I will also post the links in the comments. And join us on the Facebook group, the International Transurfing Institute Facebook group 
group. Follow me on Instagram, reality underscore transurfin. Okay, so today, going with the flow, I'm actually going to read a little bit from the first part of this, and then I'm gonna read a couple of chapters within this section here because I feel that, you know, there is some information that is absolutely pertinent to tapping into this concept like today and doing this and some of it not so much but really what it has to do with is importance i know importance is kind of like the root of all evils right and it is the opposite of going with the flow so i will start and then have a little discussion afterwards of how exactly this knowledge has helped me in creating my own reality so the needy and the indignant go weakly with the flow of life while the fighter pushes against the flow of course, in life, no one person is a pure example of either role. We all adopt one or more of these roles to a greater or lesser extent as life changes, and yet none of them are particularly effective. If it is not advisable to fight and going with the flow is too limp, what other options are there? Earlier, we described how reason authoritatively asserts its will based on common sense. Some people rationalize in a very reasonable, intelligent manner and yet are totally incapable of solving their own problems. How useful can common sense be if the mind cannot use it to provide an ideal solution to the problem? The thing is that even though the mind is being rational, it remains unaware of the fact that it is influenced by the thought patterns created by pendulums. Certainly, while a person is playing the role of the needy, the indignant, or the fighter, there can be no question of freedom of movement. In reality, the fighter has no more freedom to assert their true will than the little paper boat. I mean, isn't this amazing that I remembered this poster from junior high years and it was ex <laughs> talking of exactly this. How incredible. Metaphorically speaking, this is how the fighter moves with the flow of life. Pendulums provoke the fighter who then swims against the current, not understanding that it would be easier and more advantageous to use the flow. The fighter's mind is gripped by pendulums, but the fighter is resolutely set on battle and by making resolute decisions, whips the water with all his might in places where calm, smooth movements would have sufficed. Now imagine a person who neither goes with the flow, causing additional eddies in the water, nor lets the current carry them utterly like a little paper boat. They would be intentionally moving in harmony with the flow, noting the sandbanks, obstacles, and dangerous areas along the way, making smooth movements to keep their chosen course. This is the person at the helm. How useful is it to think of life in terms of flow, and why is it so injurious to swim passively or try to resist the flow? The information that lies in the alternative space is stationary, like a matrix. At the same time, the information structure is organized into chains of cause and effect, which give birth to the flow of alternatives. This is what we mean when we talk about flow in the context of transurfing. The main reason to avoid actively resisting the flow is that in doing so, you expend a huge amount of energy either in vain or to your own detriment. Neither can you rely entirely on the alternative's flow, for it could carry you into a calm lagoon as easily as to the edge of a waterfall. One should therefore proceed with a sense of caution, correcting one's movement with smooth actions. A person should also be aware of the general direction of the flow, which is determined by their chosen goal and the means of achieving it. Once the general course has been determined, one should rely on the flow as far as possible. Okay, so I'm going to stop here for a moment. I'm going to say something and then I'm going to read two quick paragraphs to wrap this up. So essentially, my little story about being in junior high and seeing that, what are you going to do? Are you going to you know make waves or are you going to let the sea carry you 
So this is where, this is what Vadim Zeeland is talking exactly about. These two modes, which most people fall into for their, uh, you know, to their detriment. There's the person that's the fighter trying to make waves, fighting the current, which was me pre-trans serving reality. And as a product of not wanting to be the one just getting taken by the sea, and then there's the one that's getting taken by the sea. This is the person that has not set the vector of the flow and is simply letting their reality being, be created for them. So there is a middle option. And this middle option is sort of a hybrid of both. You are setting the vector of the flow with serious intent serious intent, like my video suggested the purification of intention. This is you unequivocally determining the direction in which your boat is going to go, but you are not going to fight the waves. You are going to wait for your world to give you currents in which you can travel on that will take you to your destination. So you're not going to fight and then you are not going to not set the vector of the flow at all and let reality just dictate to you where it is you will navigate to, which in my opinion, most people are doing. Most people are falling into this second camp. So setting the vector of the flow and giving in to the alternatives flow looks like you absolutely trusting your world, you setting that intention and not questioning it, knowing that reality, that your world, your external environment is actually absolutely going to show up for you with outer intention, sending you in the direction of your choice. So this is you not forcing things. This is you not trying to make things happen. This is you simply answering the calls that come in your direction when they come. And I will talk about this more when we get into guiding signs, because this is like, this is how I operate now. And it's so much easier because I'm not trying to say that I, I'm on automatic pilot. I mean, it kind of is like automatic pilot. It's more like, it's more like my boat has a state of the art navigation system. And what it is that I do is I plug in my destination and everything else works in my favor to take me there. I just have to make sure that I'm staying on course and I'm answering all the different things that come in my direction that I need to plug into that are going to help me get to that final destination. And it is really, really powerful. It's really energetically efficient. I don't have to try to do anything anymore. I'm trusting that my world will bring me exactly what it is that I need. And I make certain that I simply show up to do that thing. So let me read the last two paragraphs that I feel are valuable. So the mind is constantly under pressure from projected levels of importance and so hindered from making truly efficient decisions. Inner and outer importance is essentially the main source of the problem causing balancing forces to manifest in the form of rapids and whirlpools along a person's path. If you reduce the intensity of projected importance, the flow will return to a calmer current. The question of whether one should surrender oneself to the flow is also important. Outer importance encourages the mind to look for complicated solutions to simple problems. Inner importance convinces the mind that its reasoning is sound and capable of making only the right decision. 
If we reduce the intensity of projected importance, the mind can breathe freely because it has been released from the influence of pendulums and the pressure of artificially created problems. It can make more objective, appropriate decisions. The beauty of this lies in the fact that once the mind is free of the burden of importance, it has no great need for a powerful intellect. Of course, to solve everyday problems, you need logical thinking, knowledge, and analytical skill, but this requires much less energy. The flow of alternatives is a luxurious gift, which paradoxically, the mind hardly ever uses. Don't you love that? It's so fascinating. The alternatives flow contains the solution to all of our problems. The majority of problems are in fact artificially created by the mind. Pendulums prod the anxious mind, which sets about solving all sorts of problems just to try and keep the situation under control. Its willful decisions are for the most part pointless, like randomly slapping your hands on the surface of the water. The majority of problems, particularly minor problems, resolve themselves if the alternatives flow is allowed to take its course. Okay, so I'm gonna let you guys in on a little <laughs> a little secret i encounter all sorts of challenges doing this like crazy challenges social challenges challenges with how people perceive me challenges technically challenges with strategy challenges with having to troubleshoot things like creating courses or online content or, you know, learning how to make videos, all this kind of stuff. And I simply would not be able to do this if I were going about trying to solve the problems on my own. I have realized that all I really need to do, first of all, is stop Stop wording challenges as problems. Okay, there's something that needs resolution. There's something that needs attention. I don't actually have to do it. My world will solve this for me if I take a step back and I allow the solution to flow up in my direction. Now, this is how I this is how I'm going down this river down this stream through my doors to my goal is I'm letting not only my world take me and show me all the ways in which I can achieve this goal easily without using inner intention, but along the way, all the solutions are presented to me in the time frame that my world sees fit. And with this, I have the ability to do all the different things that I'm doing because energetically I'm whole. If I was trying to struggle, fight, solve problems, all of these different things, I would not be able to do this. I really do believe that. So in order for me to achieve what it is that I am intending on achieving, the alternatives flow is absolutely key. In addition, everything else that I have been challenged by in my life is also benefiting from this flow of solution. My money problems have, my money problems have dried up. My issues with my romantic life have resolved. This flow, this alternatives flow, does not only help you with your goal, but it helps you to resolve everything else at the same time. It's kind of like you bring your soul frail to the equation, you bring your highest and best, and you bring your solid intention and your goal, and your world is going to help you via the alternatives flow sort of work it all out. And I know this is like a super meaty topic. I'm gonna go through the top three sort of points that I see being the most beneficial for those of you that have not yet read the book. But again, read the book if you are 
struggling in your life right now because the alternatives flow is going to show you that there's a much easier way to do things and thank god <laughs> that i found this out after you know 35 years of life and i now can honestly say i operate in a much different manner and it's so much easier and it's so much better so tune into the next one guiding signs this is you paying attention to your external environment that is showing you the way in which you need to go and again oftentimes we're so overworking it inside we don't see our world yelling blaring giving us all the guiding signs to help us towards that version of reality that we intend to materialize so much more simplistically. So I hope you appreciated this video and I will see you guys next time. Have a good one. Bye.